So to start, to solve a quadratic by completing the square, the steps are necessary. In number one, we are going to have to do step number one, is, which is to divide out a greatest common factor, that's your GCF. What goes in the box here, once you add the box to both sides, is half of b squared. We factor, then take the square root of both sides, solve for x, and then simplify. Um, so the GCF in the first one is what? Four. Now you can divide both sides by four or you can factor it out. So it's four times x squared plus four x minus one equals zero. But we're just looking at this trinomial to complete the square. So if I look at the first part of it, x squared plus four x, four is the double of some number. So I'm gonna bring that down, add in the box. Add the one over. The double, or what number doubled gives you the four? Two. So then two squared is four equals five. Once you have it written as the square of some binomial, you can then take the square root to get rid of the square. We have x plus 2 equals, don't forget the plus or minus, radical 5. Last step would be to subtract the 2. So over here, x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. Other methods to solve a quadratic. So you can solve a quadratic by factoring, by square root method, which you can always factor x squared minus 49 into x plus 7, x minus 7. By graphing, so let's highlight again, when you solve by graphing, these are the answers. And they're called roots. So when you solve by graphing, you can always graph the parabola on your calculator. So when you solve it by hand, algebraically, type it in your calculator, and it should intersect the x-axis. Those x-intercepts are your roots, which should be the same as your solutions. And then with the quadratic formula, you can leave your answer as the plus or minus radical over some number. You just want to make sure if you can simplify that, you do. But the important thing is, no matter which method you use, you should always get the same answer. So when you're doing your homework assignment, those three questions, you should get the same answer for, those, uh, for the equation with all those methods. So now circles. In order to write the equation of a circle, you need to be given the center and the radius, okay? So given center hk and given radius r, this is the equation. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. But when your center is at 0, 0, and you're subtracting 0, what's x minus 0? x, y minus 0, y, your equation when, it, when your center is right at the origin is just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Because there's nothing to subtract from the x value or y value. So for question 2, Go ahead and note your center and radius for each circle, and then we'll write the equation. So given a circle and you're trying to find the radius, put your dot or the point where you think the center is going to be and then make sure you count up, down, left, right and the circle, okay, any point on the circle, the circle itself should be equidistant from your center. So I counted up four, left four, down four, right four. So now the equation, take looking at the center, 
those numbers are going to be opposite in the equation because it's x minus. And when you subtract a negative 1, it turns to a positive 1. So it's x plus 1 squared. And then y minus 1 equals radius squared, and 4 squared is 16. When it says 0, 0, it's just x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. The radius squared is 9. In example 3, it's the same idea. They just don't give you a picture. They give it to you in words. So I have circle A with center A. Remember, every circle is named based on the center. So if it's a positive 1, it's going to be x minus 1. It's the opposite. And then plus y subtract a negative turns to positive a squared. And then 7 squared is... 49. Write the equation of circle B with a radius of square root of 6. It's centered at the origin, which is 0, 0. So it's just x squared plus y squared. But what's it equal to? What's the radius squared? 6. So if you were to square radical 6, it just gets rid of the radical symbol and it's just 6. So multiple choice. Whenever you're doing the multiple choice questions, you should get rid of, they're typically written like this. Get rid of the one that doesn't have the radius, or the two rather, that don't have the radius squared. If the radius is 4, r squared is 16. So I'm now down to 50-50. Then look at your center of the two, Maddie. Yep, goes from positive to negative 2, good. Negative 3 to positive 3, 4 is the correct answer. Now we're going to go backwards. Instead of writing the equation, given the center and radius, we're now going to, given the equation, note what the center and radius is. So for part A, where it's x squared plus y squared, Autumn, what's the center? Zero, zero, right at the origin. Radius, remember this is your r squared. What squared gives you 25? The one on the right, the center is going to be 0, negative 1, and the radius, what's going to be the radius? Not 1.5, 1.5 squared is not 3, yeah, it's the square root of 3. If, okay, you want to set up an equation and solve, so set r squared equal to 3, then take the square root. r is equal to plus or minus radical 3, and you have to reject the negative. You do not have to show me this. You can simply put radical 3, but if you do, you have to show the plus and minus. Okay? Now, going back to the last question on this page, which was multiple choice, we like to have our circles written in that format. Because that's how we can easily spot the center and radius. But note, this is the same as x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 16. Do you see the connection? That's the same equation. It's just written like this. We can easily spot the center and radius. So if I was given this, I would just rewrite it as the square of two binomials. Okay. So if you look at the next two equations, we're going to find the center and radius given the circle looking like that. In the box, okay, it says you can use completing the square to change a circle. So if the circle's in this form, which means those binomials were squared to get the trinomials, okay, we want to rewrite it in this form as the square of your binomial so we can easily spot the center and the radius. To do this, we complete the square twice. 
So we add two boxes to each side. So we have to arrange and put all the x terms together. So it's x. Again, remember the equation is right here. We want the x terms first, then the y terms, then the number. So x squared plus 8x. Then I want to add the box. Then the y squared and minus 6y. Add in the box. Equals, we've got to move the 75 over. So it's a positive 75, and then we add the two boxes. Who can complete the perfect square trinomial for the trinomial with x? So x squared plus 8x plus, Kelly? 16. For the y, the trinomial with y, it's going to be y squared minus 6y, really? 9 plus 9. Half of 6 is 3, so now we write it as the square. So this is x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, well, 16 and 9 is, 20, is 25. 25 and 75 is 100. So what's our center? Center, we're looking here. Negative 4. 3, and our radius is 10. We're going to do this one more time before we graph. So arrange it so all your x terms together, move that number to the other side, get all the y terms together, add in your two boxes. Completing the square for x squared plus 10x plus 25, good. So this is now x plus 5 squared, good. Then y squared minus 4y plus 4. And this is y minus 2 squared equals add the 25, add the 4. Well, 11, or 7 to 4 is 11, 11 to 25 is 36. Another perfect square, good. And this is how we use completing the square in geometry. So center is what? Negative 5, 2, good, and the radius, 6. The first one, we're just going to graph a circle, and then we're going to do a system with a circle and a line. So to graph a circle, you need to make note of its center and radius. Plot the uh, center first. So our center here is negative 1, negative 3. It is 10 by 10. And then, what's my radius? 4. So I go from here, up, 1, 2, 3, 4, down, 1, 2, 3, 4, left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and right, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, I don't mind if you sketch that by hand, but you can also use your compass. Radius of 4 is pretty small, so it might be a little awkward, and you might just want to sketch it by hand. But there's the circle. So we're going to finish by looking at where the circle and line intersect. So let's graph the circle first, noting the center and radius. So center is right at the origin for this one with a radius of 5. It's good to make note some things so you can get partial credit. Oops, positive. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. 
and using a compass that will help to verify that I went out the same number in each direction. It's got to go through. Now the line, it's good to know for your linear equation what your y-intercept and slope is so that in case you make a mistake in graphing, you can get some partial credit for interpreting it correctly. But first, in the form y equals, what should that equation be? Nope. X minus 5. Think about moving the y over makes it positive. Move the 5 over makes it negative. Therefore, we have a slope of 1 and an intercept of negative 5. So here's the one point. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Here's the second point. When given a system, you should label. So x minus y equals 5, and x squared plus y squared equals 25. So the two points to check are 0, negative 5. That's this point right here. And 5, 0. You have to put parentheses around your solutions. Okay? And, or else you'll lose credit. So the answer is 0, negative 5, 5, 0. And to check, you have to plug into both. So here's the check for the linear equation. x minus y equals 5. So does 0 minus a negative 5 equal 5? Yes. Does x minus y equals 5? Yes. Then you have to check in the quadratic. So is x squared plus y squared 25? 0 squared plus negative 5 squared is 0 plus 25, which is 25. That checks. Is 5 squared plus 0 squared equal to 25? 25 plus 0 again is 25. That checks.